Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Bird Dog Chat with Ethan and Cat. It is Wednesday at 7.30 Central Time, which is when we do this. Ha <laughs> um, And we're excited to be here. Just came off of a kind of whirlwind week. Spent the last few days in South Carolina. Videoing with Bob at Lone Duck. He winters in South Carolina, and I had the opportunity to come down and help him with some different stuff. The, um, as it was told to me, I got, I got, I got a welcome back to the best coast, which is the East Coast, I, I guess. But um, had a lot of fun. We had the opportunity to shoot videos for retriever training work he's putting together a course and ask for help to, to kind of video those things so it was fun it was a really cool it's a really cool time and we have a lot of fun stuff this evening to talk about which is all hunt test related as the title and description mentioned Had a lot of requests about that and we're rolling into hunt test season so we're going to take some time to talk about that, as well as mention the um, Novda side of things, so not just AKC hunt tests, but the testing in general. A brief synopsis of what is involved in each of the, the different tests and what we do, kind of, and why. And then also, um, we want to take just a second to say thank you, everybody, that are patrons. Patrons are the number one supporter of everything that we do online. So if you have watched a YouTube video or are here on this live, this is made possible by patrons. If you don't know what that is, check it out at patreon.com. It is our online dog training community. So patreon.com slash standing snow kennels. There's a link at the top. It's also patrons get the opportunity to play bird dog chat bingo organized by Miss Kelly, one of the moderators here for this evening. And it is a fun way to, um, mark off our idiosyncrasies and I uh, get the opportunity to win something. We didn't talk about what we were going to give away this evening. We did not. What should we give away? I Got anything? Pull I it out of the, pull it out of your your hat, <clears throat> honey. Your hat then. Um, we give away a hat. Yeah, let's do that. We haven't done that. Oh, oh, we need to give away ooh. a homie hat cuz we got a story about that. Ah, Ethan's got a story about okay. that. So. so, homie hat specifically, yeah. if you haven't seen that, uh, it's available at Standing Stone Supply. It has a pigeon, and it says homie, and then Standing Stone on the back. So, kind of a fun little hat, and we do have an update on the pigeon we talked about last week. Will he make it? And, unfortunately, I'll have the news on that. So... Um, we've got check-ins here. Let's go ahead and roll with that, and then we'll get into this evening's chat. And just so you guys all know, um, if you're new to tuning in for our live streams, we absolutely get to answering questions. We just typically have a topic of discussion, which is going to be the hunt test topic tonight. And then we also do these check-ins, a few little announcements, announcements, and then roll into questions if you guys have them. So... Um, if you do have a question that's just burning a hole in your pocket, throw it up with a super chat and we'll absolutely get to that first. We give those priority. So um, we've got Caleb Walker with Three Oaks Kennels in West Tennessee. Tina Metcalf. Hey, lady from Parachute, Colorado. And we've got Nan with Central Missouri, uh, Sioux City, Iowa. Hey, Miss Kelly from New Jersey. She's the brains behind the bird dog bingo and got that rolling because we couldn't think of anything cool. And this was actually really fun and funny. And it changes frequently, adding new idiosyncrasies to the list. Um, and it's, it's a really fun thing to do on Wednesday nights. Uh, South Carolina, Spruce Pines, North Carolina. A lot of Carolinans here. You were just in the Carolinas, so. Yeah, uh, Charleston is where I was at. A very cool area. The first time that I visited, we drove through South Carolina when, like, in, probably, the, in the middle of the night. Yeah, probably blank that out. We did, like, a, we went from Kansas 
all the way south to Texas, and then all, all the way the w- south to Houston, Texas. Which uh, yeah, is Texas is a big state. It wasn't just like it's a ways Texas. down there. And then all the way east through Georgia, South Carolina, um, and then back through Tennessee and back to Kansas, and we did that entire in four days. We were crazy. Uh, that was a lot. <laughs> anyway, uh, where were we at? Uh, Cedar Grove, Wisconsin, Tallahassee, Florida, Lola, Kansas. We got our Kansans checking in finally. Um, Minnesota. Hey, Melanie. New York. Hey, Mark. We got Sarah back with you now. Uh, Cody, Wyoming, and Maine. Hey, Robert. Western Colorado, land of Lincoln. You're in Lincoln, Nebraska? I don't know. Where you at? Uh, Western Colorado, Georgia, Phoenix, Arizona, Hutchinson, Kansas, Annie, whoop, whoop, Oklahoma City, High Point, North Carolina, Fort Collins, Colorado, Omaha, that just jumped. Hey, from Omaha. Hey, Tony. So you've been working with Reggie a lot on Rolling with the Stones. He's a cute little pup and doing a great job from the Lily Vex litter. Uh, Mount Vernon, Washington, Louisiana. That's Lang. Oh, Lang. Hey, Lang Lawson. Say hi to your dad. I saw, yeah, his birthday was just a couple days ago, and I saw you shot a big old buck this year and did it all yourself, it sounded like. That's awesome. Maybe. I know there was lots of bucks dying. I don't know if I actually saw Lang shoot one. Did Lang shoot one? I don't know. The the Lawson family puts a hurt on those deer down there. That's, Uh That's what I can say. Uh, Northern Illinois, we've got, uh, Southern California. Hey, Elijah, you're going to try and win a bird dog bingo again? I think so. (laughs) Lucky, lucky son of a gun. Uh, Wisconsin, Wisconsin, South Carolina, Manhattan, Kansas. Whoop, whoop, more Kansans here. Wisconsin and Texas. Northern Florida, what else? Central Minnesota, Wilkes, Wil- Wilkesboro. Didn't see the L there for a second. Wilkesboro, North Carolina, St. George, Utah, Mission, Kansas. Hey, Ian. And then we've got Baton Rouge, Go Tigers. Go Tigers. Um, and Charles from the El Tesoro Ranch. Hey, Charles. This is somewhere th- on, on somewhere. the ranch. Somewhere undisclosed location specifically. So I like it. Great check ins. We got a lot of people from different areas. I did you see an international check in this evening? Not no. yet. Not yet. Not this evening yet. All right. So um, I, we're we're jumping to this, but I do want to. It, we talked about it last week, basically. Yeah, unless my oh my bird my bingo gets overruled. <laughs> All right, so we talked about, I had a pigeon um, from a race, p- picked it up, brought it back from Texas. It was approximately 300 miles and had the opportunity to fly it in some additional races. And I talked to the guy down there and asked if I could ship the bird back down. So just to clarify and explain, so these pigeons have been um, born, well, bred born, raised here, and then not flown here. And then you ship them off to specific races where they are trained at one loss races. And then this pigeon finished a one loft race. And then what happened is we picked up the pigeon when we were down at that race. And um, they're going to be doing some That's old, awesome. old bird races, which is basically more one loft races. Um, they're all going to be flying back to the same place, so the pigeon had to be at that loft, not our loft. You're very close. Oh, dang it. The last portion is it, it, the old bird races are club races, so it's not technically a one-loft but race. But they're flying back they to fly their They fly back to home. that home. Yep. Got it. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. So, but, so, they, but the thing is, these pigeons, after being trained to the good ones home to this really specific re-home. place. They're not going to rehome and we're not going to be able to train them to home here or something like that. So the only place they're going to be able to fly and home to is down in Texas. So I called them and asked if I could send this pigeon back. It, the only reason I had it, usually they ship them out. I was down at the race and he's really, really 
unique looking bird, so it was easy to pick him out. The other ones, it's they all look like pigeons, blue bars, or they have the little checks on their wings. So there's a lot that look the same, and to pull up, sort them out of the f- almost 500 pigeons would be difficult. These that he was easy to pick out, so I just grabbed him and save on the shipping and whatever. So. Had him at home, ask if I could send him back to fly old birds, and... And then we'd have to pay for shipping to send him back. Saved on shipping to bring him home, but pay shipping to get him back there. And the loft manager, Paul, said, why don't you just let him go? (laughs) So he sat for 12 days in quarantine here, and um, I thinned him out the last couple days, fed him a little lighter, which is supposed to help him to be able to fly. Hungry dogs hunt the hardest. Hungry pigeons, I guess, fly, fly the, the best. So um, we let him go, and it it's, was a little bit of a rocky start to, to be expected. He hasn't got to fly in uh, over a week, um, almost two. And he hopped down on the ground, and I went, shoo, shoo, uh, pigeon who has just placed well in a 400 mile race you should be able to just fly away right um and he made a little circle and landed on the shipping container the shipping containers behind the house and then onto I the garage shoot him off and he landed onto the garage and then onto the house and um then took off he was just getting his bearings and made it to texas now the cool in part. about eight hours, I think, it is what we've just, figured. Just under eight hours, yep. So that would be, considering the wind conditions and the, the conditions of the day, basically, fairly tough flight, and he finished it in a, a pretty reasonable amount of time. Um, and just so you guys know, this is kind of interesting, too. I'm, I'm learning all the pigeon things just by being married to this man because either I have to tune him out Wah, 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 wah. or I actually have to listen and I do listen. So this is interesting. Typically when they do the trainings and the releases for these races, it's a group release, right? There is multiple pigeons being tossed by themselves or as a group and then f- getting their bearings and flying kind of as a pigeon flock herd flock flock. And uh, so then this pigeon was a individual release, which is, more challenging solo flight solo flight 311 miles and he had never flown any distance north of the loft beyond about 15 miles so 300 of those miles had absolute pigeon cat is learning pigeon stuff um 300 of those miles are completely unknown uncharted territory yeah and to just be able to figure it out is a crazy thing. So here is the little, um, I don't know how well, I think, give me just one second here. Should be able to hear it if I do this. You're on, yeah. Um, Roadcaster Pro. Is on fire this evening, folks. It's like I know all the things. Connected. Did it say connected? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Nope. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Go ahead and tell a story while this takes me just a second. Okay, well, story time, guys. If you uh, follow us on social media, Instagram or Facebook, or subscribe to our newsletter, you will know that we will be at Pheasant Fest this weekend. That's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, the 17th, 18th, and 19th, and that's in Minneapolis, Minnesota um, at their big convention center. And we'll be hanging out at the DT Systems booth, number 1520, I believe. Um, And we'll be there all weekend, um, all the days. And we're bringing Doc with us. So um, Standing Stone's Eltasoro Medicine Man, you can meet him. Say hi to us. Um, Hang out at the DT Systems booth. Learn about some of the products, some training questions answered, things like that. It'll be kind of a fun time. Um, As well as if you've not been to Pheasant Fest in the past, it's a really cool show. There's so much going on. Like there is um, 
the youth village where they've got youth events going on. There are side seminars going on. There's habitat stuff going on, women on the wing, and tons and tons of other booths. So um, there will be lots of um, things to do, not just say hi to us, even though that's really cool, uh, but you'll get to mingle, see some new products, see some um, some cool stuff. Cool, cool, all the cool stuff. Yeah, Pheasant Fest. We'll see you this weekend. Mm-hmm. If you haven't already planned it out, just get a plane ticket, fly <laughs> out there. Unless you live in Minnesota. There's some people from Minnesota that checked in, so, and Wisconsin. Drive and on over and say hi. Yeah. All right, I think I've got it. Hey, I just gonna show you. Um, Come in closer, babe. Five one five. Five one five ninety is home. You see him? He is He's back to a, a white head and black wings. Three hundred and something miles. We don't know the exact mileage, but. 311 miles <laughs> i come out here and checked about 30 minutes ago and he wasn't here and i've been busy doing a bunch of stuff and make some phone calls um so i come back out here and checked and he's here he made the trip it's amazing been locked up for two weeks since the race and then turn him out from kansas and he flies all the way back these pigeons are amazing. So, thought I'd show you, brother. He looks good. He's slick and pink. Made the trip. So, there you have it. Take care, brother. Mr. Paul Daniels, uh, loft manager down there at the Flying D. A very, uh, just a cool thing. I, I really, honestly, I'll, I'll tell you the truth. I didn't expect him to make it. If I did, like, trickle in a few days later, maybe, like, he had to go on an adventure and ended up down in somewhere, whatever. He, it says something. Single toss, like Kat was mentioning, he flew it by himself. Completely new route. He figured it out. In so we'll see. Just under eight hours, I'll which keep is cool. you posted. So we, I named him free shipping. and uh, <laughs> I think you should name him like first class or priority or priority something mail. like that. Same day. Same day, shit. Ooh, <laughs> something. Right something, now, I've got listed as like free shipping, but we'll see. The uh, he's got to Re- make return it. to sender. Return to sender. Mm-hmm. I like that too. Gosh, you should ask me for registered names more often. This is my jam. I love doing this. I have forty more pigeons that need names. I'm only naming the cool ones that do something fun like this. Deal or win a race, make us money. You know. Deal. The ones I'm invested in. Deal. All right, let's get into some chat about uh, hunt, hunt tests. tests. Let's go AKC route first. So first, as, as I am the judge in in this division, um, the there are three different levels. You have junior, senior, and master. Junior hunter is a a great entry level. If you've got a young dog and you're excited about getting into testing and want to see what something is about, go play. It's, it's fun. You have to um, run a 15 to 20 minute brace. JR, no one really knows. Oh, what, how do they know where to go? There's three theories. We'll go into that another time, but, um, but basically, ma- magnetic field and se- and smell and sight. It's a combination of those three things, but they, they really don't know. So um, as far as pigeons being able to make it, yeah. There, there is some the real science behind actually being able to sense the magnetic field. But again, another topic for discussion another day. So in the junior hunter test, the 15, 20 minutes, you run around a field with another puppy, and they have to point birds long enough to have established point and you to call out, my dog's on point, and a judge to see the dog is on point, and then help them and or they help you flush the bird. You fire a blank pistol, and then you have to catch them at the end of the event. That is Junior Hunter. Um, you have to get four passes in order to be titled, and... Um, there is no backing or anything like that, even though they're running with a brace. 
They can both point the same bird. It, do, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. It's it's It really is a fairly low pressure, fairly, I mean, it's just fun. It's a fun. puppy test. It's a, it's just it's fun. a fun puppy test. Um, and get out there and work your dog. It's, you know, something to be proud of still that your puppy got a junior hunter title. Um, they are, they have to be at least six months old before they start running the test. Correct. Uh, AKC's minimum of six months age of age to run any test, but six months old, that's yep. you probably run junior. All right, so that's junior. You move into senior, and this is what I like to call the gray area test because there is a lot of gray zones, very little black and white in what is happening. Um, but the dogs essentially have to hold steady until the shot. So that means they are allowed to break with the shot and then they have to retrieve birds within a step or two of you. They have to honor a bracemate or the other dog running in the event with them and you they can be woed into the honor so you can handle them into the honor and then you can hold on to them while they are honoring. So because the steadiness expectation is that they are allowed to break at shot and we don't need Two dogs, breaking a shot, making retrieves. Exactly. And then the last stage would be master. Um, and master hunter would be steady to wing shot, fall, wait to be sent to make a retrieve. They have to retrieve to hand. They have to back all on their own and stand steady to wing shot and fall by themselves through the other dog making a retrieve, specifically through making a retrieve. And they... Um, the times go up to uh, at a maximum. There's there's some variance in what the actual times are. They just have to be the same that day for that test, which it's plus or minus five minutes. But 30 minutes is the average time for a master hunter brace. Um, outside of that, uh, they have to retrieve a bird. They have to point a bird. They have to back. And all of those things have to happen in order to get a pass. So... If you have a situation where your bracemate gets disqualified early, does something wrong, or is just running around like a wild banshee and gets asked to be picked up. Um, or, or doesn't find a bird. That could happen. That could happen as well. So you would get opportunities if your dog's eligible, meaning they did, they at least found a bird and made no mistakes, um, for callbacks where they would set those situations up, like plant a bird that they get your dog gets to come work, to finish the sequences or put a dog on point that your dog gets to come back to finish the sequences. Those are called callbacks. Which when Ethan says finish the sequences. So if you're running a master hunter brace in the field and you have a dog that gets a bird found point steady to wing shot and the gunner misses the bird and there is no retrieve opportunity. That's not the fault of your dog. They still stood steady through the entire situation, but to pass, they need to complete a retrieve. So they would be eligible for a callback for that situation to be completed. Yes. Then if they did that portion or um, even had a retrieve in the field, but didn't have a backing opportunity in the field, they would set up a situation for the dog to be able to do that. Um, again, the dog is supposed to back through another dog's retrieve. So if the other dog also had a safety or the, the bird was missed, they would still need to set up a backing situation where your dog actually goes, backs that dog, and through the retrieve of the other dog. Yeah, can get a little confusing. Yep. yep, can get so. a little confusing, but um, those things need to happen in order to pass. Exactly. All of those things being said, um, if you get four passes on your junior hunter and get a title, you are only required you you save a pass on the next level. So if you go straight to senior, it's five passes. If you have a junior title, you only need four passes to be senior titled. And then the same, you need six passes for masters and only five if you have a senior title. So there's a few things in that zone, but ultimately you can run as many times as it takes or you have the money to pay for um, until you get the number of passes that you need. And outside of that, they have advanced tiers. 
The scoring is broken down on a scale of 1 through 10, which I do not understand why, because anything below a 5 is failing. Um, but you have to get an average of uh, 7 or higher to pass at any level. Um, and if you get an average of 8 or higher, you can be eligible to get a Master Hunter, Senior Hunter, or Junior Hunter Advanced title. So that just means you scored higher and, and passed again. The Not to discredit anybody's dogs that did that, but um, the way AKC kind of went about that, you have to collect the data and submit it yourself and do a bunch of the legwork for it, which makes me feel really money grab-esque in it. But the, um, the title definitely means something because it means your dog passed a bunch more and did it really really well so there Typically is that. with more obedience yeah, yeah. i mean you, you have to score higher which means less handles less maybe little bobbles less things so it's uh it's a it's a thing the we typically just run dogs in master hunter but this year specifically um we mentioned this before we're trying to do one more thing for uh Vex who passed earlier or the end of last year um if anybody didn't know that still but he there's a thing through the German Short Hair Pointer Club of America that they um rec- they recognize recognize there's the R word I was looking for thank you recognize the dogs who produced the most titled dogs in any given year so for example hunt tests have a siren dam category like all of the events in AKC and um I'm we're we're trying to get him hunt test sire of the year so we've asked for anybody willing to help with it um to take a Vex puppy has to be out of Vex, male or female, doesn't matter, and run them in whatever level they can. Uh, most people we would expect could easily run with minimal effort, junior hunter, any of the higher tiers would take a fair amount of training. Um, and then we have a handful of Vex puppies that will run at um, some of the higher levels as well. So hopefully he gets enough points and has the opportunity to become the 2023 hunt test sire of the year so yeah would be really awesome a great way to you know honor his memory so um if you guys have a vex puppy have questions about what it would take to do that definitely reach out to us um i know that um we've already had some people running their vex puppies through the Mm -hmm. first test getting passes already so that is yeah really exciting every pass you get a really cool cool ribbon ribbon too so So, kind of um, fun things to put on the wall of your dog with the plaque and stuff and yeah cool stuff so um definitely appreciate people that are already you know invested and helping us water with branch chain amino acids and uh, a little jet lag today I'm a, I'll be honest with y'all. I'm a little tired. I apologize. Well, time zone difference. Yes. So, and I'm drinking my good old gin and tonic. G and T, baby. That's right. Um, so that's the very brief overview of AKC hunt tests. There is lots and lots and lots more information. Um, if you are interested in running a dog, I highly recommend going to an event and watching. A lot of times the judges will let somebody walk along. Um, they can't go into the bird field, um, but can watch from the gallery and things like that. Also, um, one last thing that I wanted to mention, because this gets talked about a little bit, and people don't always know. Um, so there are two different ways that these hunt tests can be ran. They can have a continuous course or they can have a back course and then the bird field. And what that means is the bird field is where all of the um, shooting, the actual live rounds happen um, and the birds can be shot. Um, And that's where your gunners are at because you as a handler aren't actively shooting the birds. Um, You do need to blank if you're in the back course, if a bird is produced um, to be part of that steadiness sequence. And if your dog finds and points a bird in the back course, handles it steady to wing and shot, and obviously it's not going to fall because nobody's shooting it, but you are blanking, um, that dog is now eligible for a callback if they don't find a single bird in the bird field. So 
can can help you out there. Um, but then there are some tests that do the continuous fields where um, the gunners follow you along the entire time, and um, any bird you find has an opportunity to be shot. We got a bingo already. A bingo bango. There's a lot oh, of bingo cards with nothing on them. Wait, wait, was that it? I thought there was something. This one. Oh. It's oh, changed. It just changed. That was weird. I cleared these before this. There's a lot of people playing. There's a second page. Holy moly. I think I can search for it. I'm sorry, y'all. This is... We don't usually have that many. Not quite this many people playing. It's cool. I love it when people are like, I think I might have got a bingo. There. Right there, right there. Is that the one? I don't know, but that's a... Yeah, that's it. So it says here, pheasant. We talked about pheasant fest. Random rant. Survey says, uh, what did we rant about? I don't know what we ranted about. I mean, we told stories and announcements, but... Did we reference Instagram or Facebook? Yeah, I did when I okay. talked about um, the announcements for Pheasant Fest. And Ethan's brutally honest comment has definitely not happened. I apologize. No, you have not done one of your... He will He will I literally those. say, hey, one of my brutally honest comments. So, I did mention, in my opinion, about the money grab, but it wasn't a brutally honest comment. I don't feel like it... I don't it's know. It's more just like an Ethan comment. So maybe maybe, maybe my life just is just comments. more brutally and and, and honesting. Um, the continue. Sorry. Keep keep playing. I think that a couple of those were too ambiguous. Good word. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So next up, anything else about AKC you want to mention? Um, oh, judges are usually either on horseback, four-wheeler, or foot. Primarily on some form of vehicle. Used to be lots of horses. Horses and people that can ride them are becoming fewer and far between. So there's a lot more four-wheeler judges, which I personally don't care for. Um, I can tell you I really dislike judging from four-wheelers. I love judging off of horseback. It's uh, fun to get to ride all day, and it's fun. It's a totally different perspective to be able to see, which that perspective can cause some questions in the higher levels of stuff sometimes, like did the dog see that? Um, we'll get down on their level. No, there's no way they could have seen it. But that doesn't happen all that often, but it, it's, it's fun to ride on a horse for the day and um, get to watch – Bird dogs, it's it's kind of cool, especially if you get to ride somebody's horse that is a is a field trial horse or a, a horse that understands how to follow dogs and you know that that category. So it's it's cool. Yeah, um, I can see why like judging off of a four wheeler would be less um, appealing. Uh, it's loud. It's loud. Um, it's hard to hear what's going on. Um, it's hard to see because you, you're almost like not the, even for me the same personally, height as a person walking almost uh, almost shorter for me. Cause I'm a little bit taller, but it's, yeah. you can kind of stand up on the four wheeler to see ish, but they, meh. yeah. Um, we did have one question that I want to answer that goes into this. Um, excuse me. What is the youngest age uh, you have ran a dog through Master Hunter? It's a great question, and it will lead into some more fun stuff, but uh, the youngest dog I put a pass on was 16 months old and finished before she was 18 months old, which was Muddy. She is the youngest dog that I've ever finished. She was not even a year and a half and a Master Hunter, or right at a year and a half, like almost to the day, but... Um, I will never, ever do that again. And there are never, evers, and that's a thing like, oh, don't ever say never. This will be one that I will never do again, no matter how much the dog acts or seems or pretends to be ready. Or how many other dogs we've got going, and this one's really close, just so they on. might as well just come along. Will not. Uh, Muddy suffered for a long time. 
because she was not 100% mentally ready for that. And it does take a little bit of push. I mean, you have to think about the highest tier in the testing systems or the games as essentially the pro league, right? That's a job, okay? It's a game. They're professional athletes. They're playing a game, but they work their butts off. It's practice all the time. It's, you know, they're to the games. They have to perform. They have to, you know, you've got like uh, Patrick Mahomes, high ankle sprain, sprained it three more times trying to finish out or whatever he did. I don't know the exacts, but watching the Super Bowl, he twisted it again. He's gimping off the field. He comes back with it all wrapped up tighter and he finishes and, you know, it's, and, and not that that makes them hate it, but it's it's just a, it's a different level of ask in in that situation. It puts a so lot of pressure and stress. She was making some minor mistakes. She's very, 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 very close, very steady, and she was making some minor things that were getting her in trouble. And so you crack down on it a little bit. You make it just a little bit more of a... The, you add a, just a little bit more of a deterrent. Hey... Don't do that because that's bad. And she kind of got salty about backing, which was something she was really good at as a puppy. And still to this day, kind of will hit and miss on it a little bit. She's come out of it a good amount, but and I definitely think there was a period being down at El Tesoro has been great for that because. That is what they run is braces, lots of opportunities, and the dogs are working together on coveys. So when when we're out wild bird hunting on pheasants, there's not a ton of backing opportunities. So, you know, it's a little more individual work or, you know, making retrieves or tracking, um, which she is the best tracking (laughs) dog we've Mm -hmm. got, um, but less backing opportunities. So, you know... She does them here and there, but the stuff in South Texas is brace work backing all day she long. She came in on the end of a push to a bird that had been, oh, we knocked it down back there in the 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 weeds, right? And like, okay, well, I'll walk back there with her. And she got, you know, looked like a dang bloodhound. Nose on the ground, trailed, and just fall like... There I see the bird try and take off and fly, it jumped and then flopped and then poof, the chase was on. They snagged it, brought it back. She did that. Like 99.9% her. There was other dogs on the ground and I think Nix is actually who made, made the, the retrieve, retrieve, but she found the bird 150 plus yards away. A long way to follow exactly where this bird ran from 20, 30 minutes after it was shot, maybe. Like, impressive. She's a very impressive dog. I will never run a master hunter that young again. I will prep them at that stage, teach, develop, and then let them kind of ride it out. I see the most mental maturity in dogs between the ages of two and three. So rolling into that third year, going into the testing season, they make less dumb mistakes. So prep them. By the time they're roughly two, we would get our dogs steady to wing shot and fall, but not put them in the testing environment where they have that higher level of ask. So, Perfect. Next. Now that you know everything there is to know about AKC testing. Exactly. Or just enough to get you in trouble. Um, we can talk a little bit about Um, The NAVDA testing, which is going to be a similar level of depth uh, that we're going to go into as we did on um, the AKC side of things. So in NAVDA, you've got the natural ability test, the utility preparatory test, and the utility test. And then um, the invitational is the... the highest level there. Um, similar, I guess, if you in the sense of like junior hunter, senior hunter, master hunter, and master hunter advanced. And Ethan said he had heard some talk maybe about... It was a survey. Oh, it was a survey. Got it. And it was a question asked about creating a... In, in the retriever world, master hunters, titled master hunters, and I'm, I hope I don't get this wrong, but titled master hunters are invited to the master nationals which is an increasingly 
more difficult level of master level testing that essentially if they make mistakes, they're eliminated. I believe there's multiple days worth. And if they finish all of that, they get, uh, they get the master nationals plate. I think they get a plate, silver plate, something to eat Whatever. their dog food off of. Um, I'm just kidding. Maybe, but um, so it's a a, it's dinner. a it's an invitational portion of of AKC hunt test for retrievers. They ask, is that something that bird dog guys would be interested in doing? The answer that I gave was absolutely it is, um, but I have no idea exactly how they would play that out in the same type of scenario esque. But continue. Yes. So then the invitational for Navda. So in the natural ability level of testing, um, we call it a puppy test a lot of times because it has to be run before the dogs turn 16 months old. So AKC, they had to be at least six months old. Navda, it is, they have to be under 16 months old. Yep. Um, but there is no minimum age. So we've run puppies as young as four months old. Uh, Vino ran at four months. Nick's ran at five months. Um, a lot of times the age of the puppy running the test is dependent on when they're born more than um, exactly, you know, oh, well, this puppy was just that much better and ready to run that much earlier. Well, no, we just had nice weather, you know, to get the swimming stuff started. And there were actually tests being held because Hex is a great example of he's going to be older when he runs because he, based on his birthday, you know, he's five, six months old now, we're in the middle of winter. There is no water intro opportunities for this little guy until, you know, April rolls around basically. Um, and then he's going to be what, eight, nine months old by then. So, um, he's just going to be older when he runs through his, uh, natural ability test. So, um, in the natural ability test, there is a field portion. Um, all of this is run individually. So the puppy goes out and they run through the field for 20 minutes, finding pointing birds. Again, um, they have to establish point and hold point, um, long enough for the judges to recognize that it's a point and, um, to score that, uh, similar pointing expectation. Similar. Similar. Yes. Um, and then can't be gun shy. There would be some, some shots fired, um, just blanks though. No actual birds being shot for them. Um, and they just have to hunt with Similar. purpose. Mm -hmm. There's a tracking portion, which when Muddy ran, she rocked, uh, where they've got a wounded pheasant, um, typically, or maybe a chucker that they run off and the dog with flight feathers pulled and the dog comes up and needs to track that portion. Um, Essentially to simulate exactly what the story with Muddy was. Yeah. Wounded hey, bird. we shot a bird over here. Broke and its wing. It ran off. We got to find it. Can you bring your dog over and help us find it? We've got a feather where it went down. Yeah, maybe some blood, that sort of thing. Um, and then there's a water portion where the puppy has to swim a minimum of two times. Um, we want to see them swimming with confidence, not hesitating. Uh, they're swimming typically for bumpers, uh, but sometimes they'll swim for rocks, things like that. Um, they don't have to do any retrieving. Uh, and then there is physical attributes looked at, um, teeth, eyes, coat, things like that. Um, for the natural ability test. And uh, NAVDA, if you guys were wondering, stands for the North American Versatile Hunting Dog Association. So it is a versatile test. So in AKC, you know, you're looking at for... AKC stands for American Kennel Club. Yes, but... I'm just um, teasing you. For the pointing dogs um, and our breed of short hair specifically, there's no water portion of this. Um, there are some breeds that there is a water portion, I believe. Um Talking hunt test wise? Yes. Spinonis and wire hairs, in order to receive a senior or master title, they have to pass a water test, which basically is they have to swim to pick up a quail and bring it back within a step of the handler. The handler has to be six feet away from the edge of the water. And it's pretty low ask from a versatile thing but it is a requirement so that uh dictated by the individual breed clubs got it um so versatility 
the tracking portions, the water portions in NAVDA, um, as well as the, the field portion. So that's pretty much the natural ability test. Um, there is a difference um, between the scoring. Uh, so in AKC, it's a pass-fail. You know, yes, they are is numbers, but they either get a high enough score to pass or they fail. Uh, in natural ability, there's scoring being done, and then there is a prize one, prize two, prize three, or no prize. So um, if your dog gets a prize of any kind, other than that no prize, uh, then they are, you know, have a natural ability title the or, a, you know, whatever level of test they're ti titling at. The or one thing at. that's interesting is it gets referred to, and we refer to it as um, a in of the as titles. In AKC, the dog receives a title when they finish junior, senior, or master. In NAVDA, the only title that they give out is versatile champion. The others are just results of the test themselves. They don't consider them titles, so it doesn't adjust their name or anything where AKC's registered names adjust. Until you become a versatile champion, then you get a VC in front of the name. So... Moving on to the UPT level of testing. Yes. Okay. Anything else about natural ability that you want to talk about? No. Nope. No? Okay. Uh, in UPT, I would say similar ask to senior hunter again. Um, there's a field portion where the dogs have to be steady to the shot again. Uh, they have to retrieve within a step. Um, it doesn't have to be all the way to hand. Again, they're by themselves in the field. Uh, so there's no backing or brace work. There is a duck drag. There is a retrieve by the blind. There is a duck search portion, um, some healing, so some obedience. Uh, I'm trying to think of all the things. I think I might have got them all. Um, and they're they're kind of like shortened up versions of what would be done at the utility test. So um, at the utility level of testing, they're steady through the fall and to make the retrieve, they're sent for that. Um, so similar steadiness expectation to Master Hunter. Again, they're by themselves. The retrieve is expected to be retrieved to hand. Um, there is the duck search. There is where the dog has to go out and... Uh, no mark, uh, but there's a shot, and then they're sent to make a retrieve, basically like, hey, I shot a duck, it swam off, and now you need to go find it without seeing where it fell or anything like that. So you're searching, expanding, and tracking um, a duck in a marsh. Um, there is the study by blind portion where the dog has to go through a healing course up to a blind, stand there. You actually, at the utility um, test level, you leave your dog and shoot and then return to your dog, um, and your dog has to stay by the blind without the handler's presence. Uh, they don't have that level of expectation in the UPT test. You don't leave your dog, um, and then they they launch a duck out of a winger. You swing on it, you shoot, and you send your dog to make that retrieve. Again, um, for the utility test, they have to retrieve it to hand. There is the drag where the dog has to follow a track of a duck that has been drug off, um, pick it up, bring it back to you. There are judges at the end of that track watching to see what your dog is going to do with that duck um, out of the sight of the handler again. Are they going to be obedient and just pick it up and bring it back? Or are they going to do naughty stuff with it? Um, just like my children. Sometimes it's like, oh, if they don't think mom's watching, what are they going to get away with? Um... And then, again, physical attributes are evaluated after the dogs are wet. I think I got them all. Charles was here. He'd be able to be like, hey, you missed something. But I think I got everything. And then if your dog receives a prize one at the utility test, they are invited next year to the invitational. So, for example, Vex passed his utility test in 2022. We got his invite paperwork in the mail just recently saying, hey, congratulations, your dog got a prize one. Would you like to bring him to the Invitational this year? And we're like, dang it, we wish we could. Um, so, but he would be running in 2023. So, um, and yes, yeah, somebody asked about an e-collar in all the testing, um, AKC or NAVDA, no use of an e-collar. It's all collarless, um, no training tools, no slip leads, things like that. 
the only events are it would be considered money hunts or bird dog challenge. BDC is one of the divisions. There are some money hunts that are totally different from these uh, things that we've been talking about, that there are collar stakes or collar runs, but it's very, very, very few. So, um, And I know that at the AKC level or AKC testing, there are people that sometimes will run a like GPS tracking collar on the dog. Um, it's not allowed to be a training and tracking collar, just a tracking collar as so far no as I know. Prongs. No prongs. And the transmitter is supposed to be given to the judge. And that's for safety purposes if you think your dog is going to run really big and get lost. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Some people use it as an attempt at their dog tricks their dog into wearing a new collar. Yeah, dogs and their dogs dumb. never get further than 20 yards from It's like, your dog does not need to have a tracking collar on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so this was an interesting question um, that Robert had that I think is really important to touch on, uh, talking about, can you further explain the idea you can redeem yourself in Navda versus AKC, um, that you get collared if you don't meet the standard basically once? So that is, Ethan had mentioned when we were talking about AKC, you know, if your bracemate blows up and doesn't make it to the bird field, you don't have an opportunity to get a backing situation because they've been, quote unquote, picked up. And that happens in AKC if a dog makes a mistake. They're no longer eligible to qualify and become, you know, get a pass towards that level of the test. So they're asked to be collared and removed from the field. Now, most, yeah, mostly if the dog is being disruptive to the test as well. I mean, you technically can leave unless the judge tells you to pick your dog up. You have the ability to leave them on the ground. I wouldn't recommend that if you don't have control over your dog enough to handle them. Like a dog could break and make a mistake and you handle them and then no longer qualify to pass, but still be handleable. Um, so, but it's, it's kind of a gray area. I, the reason it's goofy is because I feel that those scenarios are key in passing dogs that are going to struggle at, at testing events. So if they break and you holler at them or they get away with it or whatever, and the judge says, pick your dog up and you leave, that is the last thing that they remember It's essentially they rewarded themselves or they were able to kind of halfway to three quarters of the way, get away with what happened. So I, um, I think that there's some advantage if you have a control or handle to leave your dog on the ground, if the judge will allow you and have the ability to finish the event out. Cause like Kat's about to explain redeeming in the knob to category, Things can get better if you have if you have verbal handle on the dog, basically. So And enough control and obedience in the situation. And that um, even if you do have that a level of control and obedience with your dog and you leave them on the ground in the AKC test and your judges are fine with that, you aren't going to be able to redeem yourself. You're not going to get a pass. No. on that test. Um, it's just experience uh, for the dog and for you and um, maybe preparing them enough for the next test, especially if it's a double-double test where there's two tests in one day and this was your first test of the day It and you've got enough handle and your dog actually will listen to you to be like, hey, that was not okay. Don't do it again because we got to pass this afternoon still. Exactly. Um, so... That um, is the AKC side of things. Now, in NAVDA, let's say the same thing happens and your dog makes a big mistake and isn't steady on their first bird contact, um, and you handle them. And they either listen or don't listen, let's say. Um, that isn't the end of the day, guys. That is one bird, and if you get another bird opportunity and your dog handles that next bird steady um, through the entire sequence with no handling by you, um, and does it again and shows improvement and more steadiness on another bird, it can 
give you a high enough steadiness score to still prize, still get a prize one maybe even, um, depending on how much um, unsteadiness there was to begin with and how much improvement that they do see um, and how well your dog does on those other birds. So even if your dog completely blows one bird contact, that doesn't mean it's all she wrote and you better go home. Um, you can still absolutely prize. So you can still redeem yourself in that sense. Um, and then there are overall scores in NAVDA um, that they are considering in each portion of the test. So there's an overall retrieving score. Well, you're retrieving in the field. You're also retrieving, um, or not an overall retrieving score. There's an overall obedience uh, score that is dependent on, like, the retrieve. And so that is looked at for, you know, if there's a retrieve in the duck search, there's a retrieve in the drag, there's a retrieve in the shot bird, there's in the field. Um, all of those retrieves have an obedience component, and then that obedience is an overall score for the day, um, if that makes sense. Look at a scorecard. It's very confusing. I highly recommend going to a rules and aims clinic. Um, it will, if you're interested in the NAVDA testing system, it will explain very well how the scoring is done, what they're looking for, and why they're scoring it certain ways. When you get into it, you'll hear a lot of silly things. One big example is, my dog has to duck search for a magic 10-minute number, and they do. then they'll pass. Well, there's more to it than that. And going to the clinic like Kat's talking about, it's, if you truly want to test and pass. Um, and learn and, and understand learn, what's going on. That, if more people attended, it would eliminate a lot of the, this is one thing you will hear on occasion, people talking about how they got screwed. Here's Ethan's brutally honest comment, okay? Here we got one. Add it to your bingo card now. Um, most of the time, your dog screwed up. You didn't get screwed. Judges don't volunteer their time to show up at events and fail dogs or... Just for the heck of it. Just for the heck of it. That is not the case very often. There may be somebody old and crotchety that says, all I want to do is fail dogs, but... They're out there for the wrong reason, and they aren't going to be doing it for very much longer. So, um, like myself and Kat, we like to go and help and watch dogs, and I like to see. It's not fun to say your dog didn't pass today. So, um, we want to give the dogs the opportunity to to show what they are and in the best light and, and fairly. Score that fairly, exactly. Apply the rules that are there. So, yep. uphold the rules while giving the dog a fair shake. Um but you will hear a lot of people talking about how they got screwed out of this or screwed out of that or misjudged or miss whatever. Or they're going to try and explain the situation and be like, well, what would you have done? Well, I wasn't there. I didn't see it. And you may not recognize everything that actually did happen that's being um, evaluated in that situation, especially if you haven't been to a rules and names clinic and you haven't gone through the apprentice program and you're not a judge. I have been... A judge for a long time. I have watched a lot of dogs. I have ran drastically more dogs than I've even watched. And the number of times I've been quote unquote screwed has been small, like non existent almost. My dog either did it or they didn't. And And I'm gonna be the first one to admit that my dog didn't do it well enough and be like, Really? <laughs> well, thank you. I I, I guess I'll Take it. <laughs> so to finish the brutally honest comment, if you are one of the people that moans and complains about your dog not passing because it I got wondered screwed, where that was going, get <laughs> get over it. Train your dog more. Spend more time. Go again. Yes. So and if you aren't having fun with it, do something else. Just because, like you had mentioned, it's a volunteer situation, right? The judges are volunteers. Everyone that's there helping Everyone put on there. that test is a volunteer. Yeah. Um, so you should also be volunteering your time to help out these clubs, these chapters that are putting on tests if you want to run at them as well. Exactly. Um, and uh, that's a great way to learn. If you are interested in running at um, an AKC test or a NAVDA test, go volunteer, go help, go join a chapter, go join a club, um, see what it's all about, observe so that you, you know, reading about the test in the rules books, one thing, seeing it live and in person is a completely different, different situation. You know, if, if you can get there, watch it be done before you're going to run a dog. You're going to gain a lot of um, understanding by doing that. 
the the last piece here, Robert, I like it. Be your dog's biggest critic, but at the same time, let the judges fail your dog or mark them down. Don't do that for them, okay? They are looking at stuff, and I've watched people while I've been judging pick their dogs up and take them out of the field and, like, they literally didn't do anything wrong, so you just Or not wasted. enough to have had yeah. me fail them. I Correct. Was, I wanted to see more. Yep. I was going to give them enough rope to hang themselves so, with or save themselves with. Let your judge give you that information. There. Poke. Ha! All right, folks. Um, we didn't get to answering any questions. There were a few that kind of popped up that ended up uh, getting uh, trickled ended, in. Yeah, we got a handful. Um it's 8.30. It's the, the hour window. We're going to select one question and then find out, does anybody have a bingo? I tried to throw an extra one we in there. We each get to pick one question. Yes. Come on. <sighs> okay. Okay, good. You pick your first one. Just pick one. Well, I'm, I'm scrolling. I'm trying to find one. Most of the questions were coming in toward the yeah. second half-ish. Good luck, Elijah, running uh, Whiskey or Whiskers, as Ethan, uh, not Ethan, Aiden was calling him as a puppy um, at his junior hunt test. Good luck. Mark, um, this is just a quick one. Would it be counterproductive to run Upland? That's your one. No, it's not. Upland and Retriever hunt test in the same season. Fine, I'm going to I'm going to combine it because I saw another one that was a similar question. Um, you from have Hel- to, y'all it, have no, to understand listen, listen, how listen. much she loves you. <laughs> I do love this, and I love you guys. And even though Melanie said, "Cat, you need to get some sleep," I still this is what we enjoy doing is helping people answer questions, sharing our advice, experiences, expertise, if you will. So. You're right. I love you guys. Um, but this kind of ties in. So Helen Kemp. Hi, my name is Helen Kemp, and yeah, I live in Scotland, wow. UK, which is our international check-in as well. Bingo. <laughs> international check What's the difference between GSP and Labrador Retriever? Because Thunder and Clutch appear to do the same work. Thank you. So um, not all short hairs are going to retrieve and be able to be tested at um, the same level as like a Labrador retriever. Um, But the same goes in reverse. You know, not all Labrador retrievers are going to be able to point and perform in, uh, you know, the AKC pointing breed hunt tests. This was a long topic of conversation between Ethan and Bob one night. Uh, But (laughs) counterproductive question from Mark with, I'm assuming you're talking about Sierra maybe running and doing this, is so Thunder... Absolutely amazing retrieving short hair. He's a really good retriever. We did a bunch of videos with him and Clutch doing retrieving drills, which is probably what Helen saw. Um, and he did a great job. Now. Uncle Bob said he's a bad mama jamma. Yes. He's a really, really strong retriever. Um, but he also can go out and do, you know, the <coughs> pointing stuff like the pointing dogs do, right? He's going to run masters this year. Charles is going to run him through his utility test, which is awesome. So hopefully coming out of this spring, Thunder will be a master hunter and a utility prize dog. Um, we will see. That is, that's um, the goal, and we'll see if it's in the cards for him so far. But he... Did both. So he did his hunt tests through retrieving, and he's going to be doing hunt tests through the pointing side of things. Now, the caveat to that is he ran junior hunter retriever, guys, um, and it would have taken more time than we were willing to commit. Um, and Ta- Time and counterproductive toward our goals. So yes. in order for him to excel at the senior or master level, which for uh, retriever. This, that's a push to even say that, Master was in the cards for him, maybe senior. I talked to Bob about this, and he said, yeah, maybe. We'd have to kind of see when we started teaching um, whether or not he truly took to it or not. There's the potent- There's definitely the desire, the desire Excuse me, to work there, but to what level, don't know. Um, and I was like, yeah, this is what we... I 
tried to convince you of in a giant circle and you told me, no, nah, it was doable. Um, and I think it just came down to a time standpoint and, again, then counterproductive. So in order to do well at Senior and Master, he would have to be extremely dependent, dependent. and handleable. Okay? Cast you, you go. You don't know no, no no questions, no ask, no searching general directions ask kind of that way which is a typical short hair retrieving thing and if we take all of that out of him so that he does that he would struggle at the utility level to be independent enough to search for his duck it would take a i write it in the comments there somebody has done it utility and master hunter and all the things i i'm sure there is there is exceptions to all of it it would be, on average, not a good idea based off of our goals. So, Correct. So that kind of answered your questions, the two of you guys. Um, I saw one that I could grab on... It was uh, right here. So I've been told dogs can pick up bad habits running senior hunter. I have a naturally steady dog and have been advised to just wait it out and go straight to master when she's ready. What are your thoughts? I 100% agree with that. I feel like if you follow along with the path, junior, senior, master, your dog has way too big of an opportunity to become test smart because they have way too many opportunities to get away with things in the testing environment. We talk about a lot. Dogs are place and situationally oriented. That place and situation is very easy for a dog to understand. And when you're running them at the lower levels and they are only prepared for the lower levels, there's a lot of margin for screw-ups. And screw-ups become knowledge of what I can get away with where. So I have seen horror stories, if you will, about people that have gone up through the ranks of Rand Jr., did great, come into senior, struggled a little bit, but then passed, and then try and move into master's and basically can't finish because their dogs do fine in training, but do whatever they want at the test, and it's difficult. So we typically go straight to running masters for that exact reason. Because it's our end goal. That is our end goal. If your end goal is senior, run senior. If your end goal is masters, this is where this is important. Um, if your end goal is junior, that's fantastic. It doesn't really matter, okay? it's not. I'm not preaching that all dogs have to be titled. It's just you want to do it, Um you kind of train for the the top tier that you're after. So if we run senior, which we have a handful of senior hunters, and we have run that, I will run senior with some dogs this year. We train dogs to the level of master, and they typically struggle with something, maybe just not quite steady enough here or there, going to make a handful of little mistakes that would disqualify them at the master level, but not at the senior level. Or they struggle with backing is kind of the number one reason. Um, they just aren't doing it 100% on their own, which is a requirement. But I can woe them. Whoa, and they easily stop. So um, that would be the reason that we would run the lower level. And the key, in my opinion, before running any of the higher level of testing period is that you can verbally handle your dog reliably. They, we always run dogs with e-collars. We always train with e-collars. As we approach the top levels and coming into the testing zone, we stop using the e-collar. It becomes the we third. We stop pushing the button. We, we, the e-collar is always there. So to restate the words that I said, no, to restate the words that I said so that they are clear, we always train with e-collars on. They always are on. The only time they are not on is at the test itself. They are always on in training. We use it as our third line of defense, essentially. Verbally handle first. Yelling. That's a 
sound grumpy and mean, whoa, stop, whatever, fetch, whatever it may be, if it's a, in the correction form, not an ask, and then physically handle, meaning if the dog breaks, you would pick them up, move them back or whatever, um, or you would handle some, usually retrieving is never an issue or I'm not to the point of trying to not physically field, handle yeah. retrieving. Yeah, no. So, but it's mostly just breaking or steadying this issue. We pick them up, physically handling, and they say, oh, and wow, mom and dad are in charge of what happens to me. And um, denials, I guess, would be considered maybe like part of that as well. So a maybe. dog does a break, you're able to verbally handle them, maybe physically handle them, and then they don't get to make the retrieve. Then it's not, oh, you made a mistake and you get to still go make this retrieve after being handled. Nah, you you lost that opportunity. Do it better next time so you can get that. And again, that will probably be dependent as well on the dog. You know, if you've got a dog that is maybe a little bit sour about backing or lacking a little retrieving desire um, and you're like, yeah, you mess up and you don't have to make this retrieve. They're like, oh, I won't do that again then I don't have to make a retrieve. You know, you, you think about that. And so you have to take it into consideration, each dog individually, but that it would be another potential form of correction. That was my segue. Sorry, your turn. So the um, third level of handle basically would be the e-collar. So the dog breaks, you yell at them, they blow you off completely. That means you can't physically handle them. So then you have to push the button, and that would be a dog that I would say is not in the stage of being ready to go test. Um, then the next piece of that is we train on a, the magic number, a minimum of three different pieces of property, and they have to be quote-unquote bomb-proof, make zero mistakes um, on a minimum of three different pieces of property. Then I will start testing them. If they are not handling, like I, I should have be, I should be in the state of multiple different properties and not had to push the button. Caleb Walker, bingo. Nice. Let's take and a look. Aaron, oh. Aaron Mumblow said, thank you and gave us a super chat. You are very welcome. You're very um, welcome. And one other thing that I like to tell people is when you're prepping for these tests and like Ethan said, you should be able to handle verbally, um, you know, with a little pressure physically, um, and then last worst case scenario, you still have to use the e-collar. You absolutely shouldn't be nagging your dog. You should not be reminding them with the e-collar. You shouldn't say, oh, I'm going to nick you to remind you to whoa, or I'm going to nick you to remind you to fetch, or anything like that, or I whistle, you need to turn, I'm going to, you know, use the collar to say, hey, check back in, things like that. You should be able to 100% handle the dog without nagging them with the e-collar. We talked about Vex. We talked about pigeons. Pigeons for training. Is we, we talked about training pigeons. I mean. Okay. Um, Instagram, yeah. Facebook reference. Yep. Gifts from a fan or a patron. Nope. We didn't get any gifts from anybody. We didn't talk about gifts, I don't mm -mm. think. Sorry. No ASMR. Mm -mm. I don't, Did, I mean, unless, unless I slept through that part of it. Did we? I mean, sometimes we forget. Um, now I have a bingo. Well, let's check it. Okay. Hopefully checking, somebody's checking. got a bingo. Somebody needs that homie hat. There's a lot of cards in play right now. That's crazy. You know what I think is happening? I think people are pulling multiple cards. They're sitting there play up, up in their annies here. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't even think that that was a thing. All right, we've got uh, this one's not even got a bingo yes. mark. Oh yeah, it does. Navda. Yep. Quail. Yep. Free space. Yep. yep international yep. check-in and a super chat. All right. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Send us a message hat. on Patreon with your information, and I will get you what you need to get your hat. Huzzah, huzzah. The money donated. Yeah, we did donate um, the money from... What, what's assuming. the money donated? What, I don't know what the question is. I don't know either. But we did donate the money um, from the live that we did with the celebration of life for Vex that like people super chatted. We yep. donated that to um, Canine Cancer. 
I got an email about it. It's in the emails. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What was the name? Something cancer light for Oops. dogs. Yeah. But you're in my inbox, sorry. Oh, well, that's not going to help me. How do I get to my inbox? Right here. This is so confusing. There you go. National Canine Cancer Foundation is who we donated to. Um, and we also had had a um, client friend uh, that donated in Vex's honor as well to that same foundation. Anonymously, so, we uh, don't know who it was. So, But we did get a card saying that there had been a generous donation made in Vex's name. Um, so, Oh, money gifts from a page. No. Okay. Well, congratulations Sorry. to... M. Miller, Miller P. Miller P. Miller P. Yeah, something. Sorry if Send I us that. a message on, on Patreon. Patreon. Yep. But we went over by a good amount because I had to answer like five more questions. So until next time, uh, we will not be here next week. Sorry, gal. Ethan is going to be down in South Texas doing some El Tesoro stuff. Um, and I will be holding down the fort with the little boyos. So. I'll have to double check the calendar. We'll make an announcement, though, uh, when we'll be going live again with y'all. So check us out on Pheasant Fest weekend, and we will see you soon. Goodbye.